Welcome back to the Nature's Always Right YouTube channel. My name is Stephen Cornett. I'm an urban farmer who uses only natural practices and I teach people how to grow food for their families or for profit as a market gardener. So today this is part three of my Grow Food Now series teaching, teaching the most essential basic gardening skills. Uh, if you haven't seen part one and part two or the live session that we did yesterday, be sure to check that out down in the description below. I'll have links to all of that and any other related videos um, that you could learn from and get more detail about these different topics. So today's video is all about direct seeding, how to plant your seeds directly into a garden bed. We'll talk about seed depth, we'll get into some in-depth watering and how you're gonna water them as the plant ages, you know, one, two, three weeks old. We're also gonna show you how to plant into a container, which is fantastic for gardening in an apartment or, or in small spaces. So lots of great stuff in today's video. I hope you enjoy it. And I'll see you guys in the live stream tonight covering any topic that you would like about gardening at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Please be sure to like this video and share it with anyone that you think would enjoy this series of videos who's learning how to garden or just trying to improve their skills so we can get more people growing their own food. Okay, so now let's get into seeds. First, we're gonna do direct seeding right into the bed. Some crops that you can direct seed are things like root vegetables, beets, radish, carrots. Uh, beans, bush beans. You can of course direct seed things like lettuce and spinach as well. Um, some things are better to do in cell trays just because it's a little bit easier. You can keep them protected, make sure that they sprout, and then you put them into the ground when they're big enough. So I'll show you guys how to do cell trays right after this. So for the direct seeding here, we're just gonna do beets, radish, and carrots. All these seeds are from True Leaf Market. They're a great seed company that I'd highly recommend. And I'll put the link in the description, but we're gonna do a, the rainbow blend of carrots, Chiogia beets, which are really beautiful when you cut them, they have a candy cane striped pattern, and then French breakfast radishes, which are really juicy, mild, not very spicy radish. So for this, we just need to make some lines, places, little furrows where we can put the seeds. So I just like to take a big stick and just pull it all the way across. Now if you've seen my other videos and my farm, you know I use a direct seeder like the Earthway seeder, but you can't really do that in a raised bed like this. So you could seed these horizontally. You could also see them parallel with your uh, bed here. It's just gonna depend. You can do it either way and be successful. We have our lines running vertically here, so we're gonna do them in line with our irrigation lines. If you wanna have more variety or try to stack more types of plants in here, then doing it the horizontal way is kinda of nice because you could fit more rows in here. So it just comes down to personal preference. And we're gonna go vertically to give my parents a lot more vegetables of only three types. I just like to use a stick or something like that just because it makes it a little bit less effort. We're trying to plant these seeds about a half an inch down. The larger a seed is, the deeper it typically needs to go, but most of your veggies will do fine at half an inch. Carrots do better at about a quarter inch. They're the highest planted seeds. Beets, you can do about a half to three quarter inch. Something like a bean or corn seed that's huge can go down about an inch. Beans can be three quarter inch. So just to give you guys some examples of how to plant these, so I'm gonna clean, we're just gonna clean these lines up a little bit. We're gonna do two rows of carrots, one row of radish, one row of beets. So this row, I'm gonna make sure that I get it flat and not too deep for the carrots. And if you go a little bit too deep, when you cover the seeds at the end, you can just lightly cover them. And if you, so that if you made your holes a little bit too deep for the seeds, it's just a way of getting around that. Whereas uh, the ones my mom did, they're radishes and beets, so if they're a little bit deeper, that'll be great. And just, we wanna be sure at the end when we cover them, that they're only about a half an inch in depth. So now as far as the seeding density, how many seeds you're gonna drop in here, you just can just do it by hand. And I'm doing way too many. That's an example of overseeding, that's, that's too much. When these sprout up, we're gonna have to thin them down a little bit. If, if you leave it this thick, 
the carrot won't be able to grow into a really big root. So let me try that again. Typically I'm doing this with the Earthway Cedar and that does it automatically for me. So here's the example of a good seeding density for the carrot seed. That's gonna come out really nice and produce nice big carrots. That is way too many seeds. That's gonna require you to come back and thin them out if you wanna have nice big carrots. So just be careful as you're seeding to not do too many. It might even be a good idea, especially if you're starting out, to take a picture of what, how many seeds this looked like so that when they sprout up, you can learn from the experience so that next time you don't do as many or maybe you do more because a lot of this is going to come by trial and error for you. If all of these sprout, I'll, I'll be able to feed the entire neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so here's an example of some really good beet seeding density. And don't worry, if some of them sprout close to each other, one will get bigger than the other. You can harvest that one first and let the other one grow larger. And that's what I did on my farm. This is a great way to get more harvest in the same amount of area. These are the radish seeds. And that's a nice looking density. Radish, you can um, overseed a bit more and still have great radishes. So this looks great. So on the carrots, when we, when we cover them, we're just gonna really lightly cover them. Very, that's, too, that's a little too bit much? too much. Okay. They only need about a quarter inch of covering. They, they barely anything and they'll be fine. So we made these furrows a bit too big, but that's okay. Because you can kind of correct that mistake for whatever seeds you have as you cover them. Now the radishes and beets, we have a lot more leeway so for that we can just grab the furrow and close it like this we want these to be covered half an inch and then one thing you can do is come back and then pat it down and that's going to give the perfect seed to soil contact so once we add water it's going to help these germinate perfectly okay so that's it and now all we need to do is just water these down with a hose we can use our irrigation lines and those will help to keep it wet. But for germinating seeds, it's really important that once they're wet, you keep them wet. And especially for carrots, if you get the carrots wet, they start germinating and then they dry out, they will die. So if you're having a problem getting your carrots to germinate, keeping them wet may be the issue that you're facing. Some people will tell you that if you get water on the leaves, it'll actually refract the light and it can burn your leaves, but that is not true. You can get plant leaves wet and they're completely fine. Uh, I would recommend though, don't water leaves of your plants in the evening because that moisture is going to sit on the plants all night long. So things for like cucumbers and tomatoes that can cause fungal issues uh, developing in your plant. So, and even during the day, I don't, I don't water the leaves of my cucumbers or tomatoes unless I'm foliar feeding, which means feeding the plant's nutrition through the leaves. And in that case, you can do that uh, in the evening or early morning because you want the water to sit on those leaves, um, inoculating biology and, and nutrients into those leaves. So now we just wanna make sure and check to see how wet, dry, uh, wet or dry this is. And by checking, it needs more water. So we wanna make sure that it's for sure an inch down of wet. And like I said, soil will take a lot of water. So you may need to do this two, three, or even four times depending on how dry your soil is to begin with. So I just want you guys to notice how big the distance is between that summer squash to the tomato and the pepper. Summer squashes get gigantic. So you'd really need a three by three foot area for them or as they continue to vine and get longer, you can put them on the side of your bed. Once they get big enough, you can drape them over the edge of the garden bed and they'll continue to grow out on the ground surrounding the bed. And they're getting the nutrients from this good soil where their roots are down here. And that's another great way that you can grow more and less space. You can do this with a winter squash, like a pumpkin or a butternut squash as well. Nice, so now that's super wet in there, that'll be good enough to germinate. And then we'll just come every day, 
give it a little bit more water until we see the plants germinate and pop out of the ground. And we're gonna to continue to make sure that they're very wet for that first week until the plants get taller and they show their first true leaves. So the first two leaves that come out of most plants are their cotyledon stage leaves. Uh, those are the first ones that uh, allow them to get sunlight and then put out the next true leaves, which are the, the leaves that the plant will put out for the rest of its life. So once the plants are about two, three weeks old out of the ground, they're gonna develop a root system and that root system is gonna go out and seek water. At that point, you don't wanna over water and water them every single day. That may be required in the heat of summer if you have 90 or 100 degree temperatures, you probably are gonna to need to water every day. Um, but if it's a cloudy day or temperatures in the 80s, you're gonna to wanna to wait. Um, once plants get really established, like a huge tomato plant, even if it is 100 degrees, you don't need to water every day because the roots are going to go out and find that water for the plant. So it's actually better to let the plant seek out that water and you're helping to train the roots to do that by not giving it water every single day. If you give it water every day, you know, it's going to be comfortable. It's not going to want to seek out and create a bigger root system because they're going to think, hey, I've got everything I need right here in the top. But you want them to really seek out and expand their root system. So watering deeply less often once the plant is in its adult stage is a way to make that happen. So that's how I recommend watering once the plant is full grown. So one final note on watering. Today it was about 70 degrees and cloudy all day long and the beds are already really wet. They don't need any more water. So I would not want to water today. Keep in mind the temperature and the sun and the water that your beds are currently at before you decide to water more. And if I check any of the transplants here, also super wet. So if you check and there's already plenty of water, um, you can actually do more damage by adding more water and keeping everything too wet. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about if you need to water. So another fantastic way to garden is to use a big container like this. So I'm just going to show you how I would set a large pot up for planting strawberries. But you could put anything in here. You could put a bunch of herbs. You could put lettuce, kale, and chard, um, whatever you'd like. You can get one of these just from any of your hardware stores drill some holes in the bottom for drainage and then we just need to add soil which we're going to use the Kellogg's potting mix again and then we're going to add in some of our own fertilizer azomite and then that nutrient uh, water that I created as well okay so now we want to make sure we leave enough room for our tomato or our strawberry in here so next we're going to add our fertilizer, our azomite, and just mix that into the top like six inches. You don't need to mix it throughout the soil all the way to the bottom. The roots aren't even going to go down there, at least for a long time. And when you water, that's going to help to incorporate it down into those lower areas. So we're just going to mix the top here. Because this is an enclosed pot, mixing this up is a good thing to do. And then after this, I, I would just keep adding nutrients to the top. Top, it's called top dressing. You don't need to, to mix nutrients in anymore after this. Okay, and now we're ready for our strawberry. So I'll just pull the soil to the side here. Doesn't need much pulling away. The roots aren't very established yet. Nope. A little bit more. A little more? Okay. Yeah. And then we just want to put it in the center of the pot. Okay. All right. And then maybe we'll add a little more soil to this side here. Make sure everything's covered nice and well. Push it down a little. And that's it. Now we're just going to water this in. Also, this is a way that I'm keeping all my berries together. I've got blackberries, I have goji berries in barrels like this that are surrounding the same area. So now we'll throw in our nutrient water. Because this is already a fairly big plant, 
we'll water this every couple days and once you know a week or two from now the roots will really start to branch out and we can water it less and less you know every three to five days probably until it gets really hot here in the summer where it's going to require more water and again you can just pull back a little bit of soil see if it's dry if it is dry about an inch or two down then give the plant more water and we'll also water it a little bit more right now to make sure the entire root zone is completely wet. So today is uh, Tuesday, March 31st now. It's been about six days since we planted these seeds and we're starting to see some germination from the radishes and now the beets are just starting to pop up. The carrots are probably about another week out from germinating, but check out how good they look. Uh, we did a great job on our density for the radishes. It's gonna turn out great. Hope this video really helped you guys learn some more about direct seeding and buying your own seeds in starting your own transplants and just planting directly in your bed is the best way to save money and get better as a gardener.